Okay, family. Welcome to another episode or chapter of Feel Free TV. Today's topic is 10 Top Rules to Surviving Prison. Hopefully, none of y'all go to prison. But the reality is that some people in your family will go to prison. Um, it's not a good thing. But these are the 10 top rules of surviving prison, especially for a long duration. If you have any family members that are, are incarcerated or are planning on getting incarcerated, which like I said, I hope they don't get incarcerated. We don't promote getting incarcerated, but we know the reality of the situation, especially in this day and time, especially for black men or black people, melanated people. So, 10 top rules to survive in prison. The first rule is no gambling. No gambling or owing or being owed. Why is this? When you gamble, you put yourself in a position to get familiar with people in a certain way that you shouldn't get familiar with being in prison. When you're gambling, you allow people to get in your pockets. This is what we call it. This is what we call it. People getting in your pockets. So whether you owe them or they owe you, if you owe them, then you're in their pockets. So now you become personal with people, individuals that you really don't know. And if you're a person of high morals and values, if someone owes you, that's going to put you in a predicament where you're going to get paid. So you're going to do whatever you have to do to get that payment. You know, it could be uh, an aggressive way, which could lead to an altercation. Um, it could be a verbal. It could be a verbal. You could, you know, let someone know, like, listen, you owe me. And um, listen, when are you going to pay me? And someone can take that in a manner that can put you in a predicament. You know, um, gambling in prison is something that you don't want to do. It's like playing with fire. A lot of people gamble and don't have any money at all. No family support. No job in prison. They even pay you. So... You're playing with fire when you gamble in prison. Okay? So if you ever go to prison, which I hope you don't do, but gambling is something that you should not do. That's going to put you in a predicament. That's going to open doors that you don't want open. If you owe someone, you're going to, you're going to open doors for someone to come to you for payment. And if you can't pay them when you say that you are going to pay them, it could be an issue. So we don't want to do the gambling thing. If you have to go to prison, don't do gambling. All right. That's a no, no. That's a dub. S rule number two. Stay away from drugs. This is another thing when it comes to owing people. When you're in prison, there's going to be a lot of drug use. There's going to be a lot of heroin addicts, uh, weed, pill, uh, coke, hair, um, all type of drug addicts. Um, you don't want to get involved in that. That's very dangerous because you're getting involved in the drug trade within prison. Um, people are very aggressive. And they want their money. And if you cannot pay, you open doors for someone to come to you and want to provoke violence or want to confiscate things that are, that are within your cell. You know, I've seen it. I've seen, I've seen where guys owe money and they can't pay. So they come to your cell 
And whatever they see that's nice that your family have you know sent to you, it could be the Air Jordans, it could have been like the, you know the V necks T shirts, you know whatever whatever thing that you got from your family or commissary food wise, they coming to collect. You owe that money. Same thing with gambling. They coming to collect. This is why you don't put yourself in that predicament. The old people. And like I said, if you're a person of morals and values and someone owes you, that puts you in a predicament to come collect. And a lot of times, see, everyone is not soft in prison. This is another thing. Everyone is not soft, no matter what they look like or where they from. So if you come collect and they take that as a threat, they might come at you with a weapon or come at you with a group of people. So you have to bear in mind that the drugs and the gambling shit is something that you don't want to do while you're in prison. It can be very dangerous, and especially if you're trying to get out of prison because this can cause you to get extra time in the box or what they call a hole, solitary confinement, um, it's another name for a shoe, special house, special housing unit. This is something you don't want. You want to do a smooth bid. Gambling and doing drugs or selling drugs is not it. All right? So stay away from that. Stay away from gambling. Stay away from selling drugs. Number three. Number three rules to survive in prison. Okay? Don't partake in any homosexual activity. I know. We live in a climate where it's okay to be homosexual. To each his own. I understand that. But when you're in prison, you're dealing with a small population. An aggressive population. And a uh, a population that's deprived of sexual act, uh, sexual activity besides masturbation. So if you partake in homosexuality, just know that you are putting yourself in a predicament to be assaulted or being socially shunned that's like in regular society you could be socially shunned for being homosexual that's without giving when you're talking about prison population it can be a very aggressive um for instance i know a guy i'm gonna say his name his name is dj and um he was a homosexual and he was working in a child line the chow line is where someone serves food to the rest of the population. Being that he was homosexual, people didn't even want him serving food. And they complained to administration. Enough people complained to administration to get him removed. Um, this is how it is in prison. When you're homosexual, people don't even want you in certain positions, dealing with certain things, especially with food. Um, if you're a homosexual in prison, just know you put yourself in a predicament where you have booty bandits. This is what we call booty bandits. Guys who take ass. You know, dudes who are very aggressive when it comes to taking ass. And what they will do is they will force you to give up that ass. If you are homosexual, they will force you to give up that ass. They will pimp you to other people, you know, and it's just so many different factors that happens when you deal with homosexual activity in prison. Um, you get into this love triangle type thing and it can just turn crazy. You might have... A homosexual might have different type of dudes that he's dealing with. So that's going to cause friction. I've seen homosexuals 
um, get money and commissary out of guys just on the hopes that he can get some ass. And he, the individual will not get ass from this homosexual and the individual turn violent on the homosexual. Yeah, so homosexuality is crazy in prison. And another thing I would tell you is never get into an altercation with a homosexual, never beef with one. Why do I say that? This is prison, this is prison is a whole other world. We're not talking about out here. I'm dealing with reality and in prison aspect. Um, if you get into an altercation with a homosexual and you lose, and you lose that altercation, you come out on the, the losing end of this physical altercation, you will never be able to live that down. Never. Never. I don't care what jails you move to within that state, you will never be able to live that down. That is an asterisk on your prison record as far as prison is concerned, dealing with prison, prisoners, you know, inmates. You never want to get into altercation with a homosexual. You know, so you always want to try to avoid that. Anything dealing with homosexuality, you want to try to avoid. Now you have homosexuals that come in to prison. Um, a lot of them live good because they have the bussy, part of my French. But a lot of guys want that bussy, especially a lot of guys who are who have been incarcerated for a long time. They want that bussy, and they'll pay money. They'll cater to the home to, to the gay guy. You know what I'm saying? And you don't want to get caught up in that. You can get hurt. You're dealing with emotions and you're dealing with sexuality within the prison walls. Stay away from that. I always tell people to stay away from that. Even if you're homosexual, I tell you to hold off until you get your ass home. Because it's dangerous in prison. Motherfuckers will kill you for playing games or get caught up in some love triangle. We're dealing with an aggressive environment. All right? So, number four. Number four rules to survive in prison. All right? It's no snitching. You don't see nothing. You don't say nothing. You don't hear nothing. That's a fact because everybody talks. You snitch to a correctional officer, correctional officers talk. They tell other inmates and other correctional officers who's telling. They let, they let every correctional officer know who's a snitch. And then you have certain correctional officers that have a rapport with certain inmates that let you know who's a snitch. And if it's even thought of that you are a snitch, harm can become of you. You can get your top pop. That's a fact. So keep your motherfucking mouth shut. You know what I'm saying? This is a whole nother world. This is not society as you know it. This is behind prison walls. If you are a snitch, and it is known, you're gonna have a hard time. You're gonna be in solitary confinement or, or admins or segregation, which is administrative segregation. This is where the administration puts you away from the rest of the population. So, Snitches, it's, it's, it's hard for you to survive if everybody know you snitching. Or if anyone thinks that you are snitching. You know, like I said, there's no rest haven for snitches in prison. People snitch and they get away with it, yeah. But eventually what happens is, is that the correctional officers, they use you. This is the thing. If you're a snitch, the correctional officers, they use you. 
And eventually they give you up. They do that all the time. They give you up eventually. They throw you to the wolves. Especially if you don't have no viable information and they need information, you're going to have to make some shit up. Because they will give you to the wolves. They will let it be known that you are rat. Or if you rat, if you're ratting, if you're telling on correctional officers, they definitely are going to expose you. So either way, you have no wins. Eventually, your card is going to get pulled if you are a snitch in prison. So I advise you, if you ever have to go to prison, which I hope you don't, don't be a snitch. Because eventually you will be exposed. Eventually. Okay? Number five. Number five top rules to survive in prison. Never underestimate anyone. Never. I don't care how they look, where they from, what they being incarcerated for. You never underestimate anyone. Everyone has the potential to be extremely violent. Everyone, I don't care how skinny they are, how docile they may seem, in prison, everyone's a threat. Everyone. Give you an example. So I get incarcerated. I'm in a reception area. I'm in um, Ulster Correctional Facility. This is a medium correctional facility for people who are transitioning to state penitentiary from different counties all over New York's uh, New York State. So this Asian guy, people are stealing his food, you know, out of his locker, stealing his commissary. Small Asian guy. He speaks. He's from New York City. So he speaks perfect. He's an Asian, he's an American Asian. So he's not like strictly that straight Asian off the boat. So, you know, black guys are taking advantage of him. He's small, he's soft from what they think. He's the only Asian in this dormitory. What happens is dudes keep stealing from him and they get so bold where they let him know who's stealing from him. What happens is one night they go to sleep. He doubles up a sock. He puts two Jack Mac cans. Jack Mac is macro cans, big ass cans. He puts two cans in a sock, doubles it up and beats these dudes while they sleeping. Blood was everywhere. I'm talking about all you can hear is grown men screaming. How did they sleep? Imagine being asleep and being beat with cans and a sock. This is why I say never underestimate anyone. Everyone has the potential to be violent. Everyone has the potential to be deadly. Everyone has the potential to kill you. You never underestimate anyone. I don't care if they white, black, Asian, small, skinny, big, no matter their personality. People are dangerous in prison. Never underestimate anyone. That could be your downfall. So you want to stay in your lane.